My name is Wim Eklers. I am for almost 20 years working with Coljet. My current role is Managing Director of Coljet Europe. We are extremely excited that we are helping the pharmaceutical industry with helping to distribute their vaccine globally. Some of the vaccines need to be cooled and frozen to a temperature to almost minus 80 degrees Celsius. Dries is obtained by expanding liquid CO2 and it has a temperature of minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. It doesn't melt, but it sublimates. It is during the, this sublimation that the gas is providing the needed cooling energy. The availability of dry ice is depending on the availability of liquid CO2. Um, liquid CO2 is a molecule that is released by different production processes. It can be ammonia plants, uh, for instance the production of fertilizers, bioethanol where CO2 is released during fermentation, underground CO2 although it's only representing a small part of the global CO2 stock, and then more recently and more environmentally friendly biomethane plants that generate CO2 in addition to methane. My name is uh, Dennis Jort and I'm the uh, Vice President for our Global Dry Ice Manufacturing Systems Division and the Integrated Blasting Systems Division. The challenges when you're talking about distributing the vaccine most of the time is the unknown, right? Uh, you have people are not giving any clear direction per se on you know exactly how it's gonna happen. You know how many vaccine am I gonna receive? Uh, we got numerous uh, calls here, cold jet about you know dry ice requests, and we can hear that you know they don't have the answers that we are looking for to help them. So we. Uh, have to guide them since again we've been in the business for a long time and we've been down this road many many times when it comes to the whole logistics of cooling dry ice and so forth so I mean we, we spend a lot of our time guiding customers and help them to uh, overcome the challenges there is uh, with this uh, vaccine distribution the other thing is you know what can the local suppliers do I think most importantly is to be flexible. This is not really your typical dry ice customer uh, where you're shipping out you know, a trailer load full of dry ice. Uh, a lot of these customers are requiring you know, small quantities of dry ice. Uh, it can be 100 pounds per week, it can be uh, you know, 200 pounds a week or something like that. That is probably one of those challenges that is out there because dry ice today is typically always distributed in a minimum of 500 pound totes. So the industry is not used to handle, you know, the smaller requests and all that. And that can, you know, cause some headaches down the road. And that's where I think the local dry ice suppliers or the industrial gas uh, companies that are producing dry ice, you know, probably have to be a little bit more flexible with this and more accommodating to those smaller amounts that is being requested. Uh, you know, the doctor's office that are receiving 100 vaccines or 500 vaccines don't need 500 pounds of dry ice. So he will ask for 50 pound dry ice or 20 pounds of dry ice, whatever it is. And, you know, again, that's where we are trying to talk through it with all our dry ice, uh, <clears throat> with the dry ice network we have out there today, not only in the US, but globally on how we can together try and, and get this out as smoothly as possible. We have the dry ice suppliers out there saying we got 16 millimeter pellets, we don't have 10 millimeter pellets. And you know, in, in most cases they would say, well, dry ice is dry ice, so here you, ha you have 16 millimeter pellets. But the thing is, you know, the pharmaceutical companies uh, that have brought out the vaccine where they use dry ice, those boxes are designed in a very specific way 
to accommodate a certain amount of dry ice. And with all the testing that has been done and all that, the 10 millimeter pellet is the one that meets that um, weight requirement that will be for dry ice. So if you're using a 16 millimeter pellet, you can't compress and it won't pack as nicely around the, uh, the vaccines as the 10 millimeter pellets. So there is a rhyme and reason on why 10 millimeter pellets is the preferred one. Of course, there's a couple of different scenarios. When the vaccine is you know, arriving at the uh, FedEx of the world, UPS and so forth, uh, they will replenish um, the boxes with an amount of dry ice that's needed and then it will be you know shipped from there uh, further out to the end users the end users being you know everything from the little clinic in in your local grocery stores uh, it can be uh, the cbs of the world the walgreens hospitals and so forth they also uh, are responsible to re-ice again or replenish uh, the vaccine boxes and the frequency of that is once every five days is what's recommended by the pharmaceutical companies. As we all know the impact of COVID-19 to the global economy and also to the health of the global population, Colgate is extremely proud to help distributing the vaccine. It's um, a real honor and again Colgate is extremely excited that we can help in the distribution process of the vaccine.